Well, morning everybody. Today is Friday the 30th of April 2021 and we are heading to a press day. Ooh, exciting! So this press day is for uh, zero motorcycles. So, as I understand it, today they've got a range of zero motorcycles there for us to go and just have a tootle around on. So it's going to be quite a relaxed day anyway. We'll get there at 10. It's like 30 minute turning up period, 10 till 10.30. Just have some coffee, probably a bit of a chin wag, have a look around the bikes. Uh, we're going to ride out to Uppingham, we're going to have some lunch. And then this afternoon we can just take the bikes out as we please. Looking on Twitter last night, I noticed that um, Lara Moto, at Lara Moto, I think that's her username. Look at that, she's got driving gloves on. How sweet. In a Yaris. Uh, yeah, Lara Moto is going to be there. So I've never met her before, so that'll be, that'll be good to meet someone else. Oh, screw you then. Even old GS riders don't nod. So I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to get down there now and uh, go through the registration process. We'll turn the cameras back on when we get there. I'll see you soon. Cheerio for now. So this is the bike that I'm going to be riding first. Zero SRS. And then over there we've got Moto Bob. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six bikes, and there's three of us. <laughs> what a day. The noisy engine bikes are over there. Yeah. Oh, let's go and have a look at Lara's bike, actually. So yeah, we're just going to get ready now and then we're going to head out, have a bit of a ride. It's a beautiful day as well. It's been a little bit chilly. We are in eco mode. We've got a range of 92 miles. The motor's at minus 10 degrees, I don't understand that. I know. Where are we? Don't rev it. Yeah. <laughs> this feels odd setting off in a convoy and we're not making any noise. Anyway, here we go folks. We're going to Uppingham for coffee. A lovely little town of Uppingham. Animals clearly not affected. Because there's no damn noise. So we've got Paul in front, and then we've got uh, Moto Bob, and then you've got me. We've got Dan behind. So Dan's done a lot of riding for um, Zero. He's been all over the place on Zero bikes. He's regaling us with some um, battery deficiency tales. So yeah, it's interesting. Interesting day. We've got Lara Moto as well, who's coming up. There she is, she's behind us now. So I've not ridden this one before, this is the SRF. Uh, I've ridden the SRS, which is the fared version of this bike, but I've wanted to ride this uh, naked version, and it feels good actually. I'm not a mad keen fan of naked bikes, I do, I do like something to hide behind. It feels really willing to turn into these bends, but the weight, the weight feels a little bit strange. So it's got this massive 14 kilowatt battery on, 14.4 I think it is, and you do feel it um, in the motorcycle as you're actually riding it. It's not too bad. It feels like it could be a really sporty bike, but not, a, not like a light sporty bike. You know, like a street triple or something like that. So the engine power of this is equivalent to something like a 660, 700cc bike. But the torque, so the torque is more equivalent to something like a 1,000cc bike. Yeah, it feels odd. It feels like it's um, turning in a, of its own accord. 
it feels like it's doing its own counter steering as, as you turn into the bends i mean it's it's just going to be down to purely the the way the bike's set up so the geometry so as you turn you can feel it pushing against the hand that you're you know the direction that you're turning it pushes against that hand which is a little bit odd really but it's still good it's all good nice turn of speed i do like these bikes they i mean apart from the noise really there's there's nothing discernible to say that you're not riding a petrol bike it's the same sort of experience Yeah, it gets to 72 miles an hour really easily. I mean, for saying we're still in eco mode as well. It's still a bit nipsy, you know. I can feel it across my legs. And you ain't getting warm off this engine when you stop. It says the motor is now seven degrees. Sort of cantered over slightly forward on this bike and your knees are hutched up a bit. So for an old git like me, uh, I'm not sure how comfortable that'd be on a day's riding, but Literally, what we're doing now, it feels really quite comfortable. It's not an uncomfortable bike. It's not wristy. Fairly neutral, the way it feels at the moment. Oh yeah. It's very stable. I mean, at this sort of speed, it's very stable. It feels like um, any other naked bike doing 70 miles an hour. handles well the ride the ride feels really quite plush actually i'm not sure what size these front forks are but they they look like they mean business and i'm sure that's uh, they're beefed up to deal with the weight of the battery and now now we're going at this sort of speed it doesn't feel as heavy as it did when we were trundling along at low speed so yeah it's good man it's good Yeah, you see at lower speeds that, that steering does feel a little bit more unusual and it does need some, it, some input compared to, I'm going to compare it to my Africa Twin because that's what I ride obviously. So the bends need a little bit more input to get into them whereas the Africa Twin you sort of, uh, you will it to where you want to go but I, I suppose that's true of any bike once you've been riding it for a while. You, you sort of get used to its idiosyncrasies and you sort of think where you want to go and you do it automatically. So the engine braking in Eco is really quite strong. As soon as you knock the throttle off it wants to stop you. So we're back up to 76 miles range now. Really smooth takeoff. The throttling is dead smooth. Um, because I remember as well the sport mode on the SRF, SRS, I'm on the SRF, the sport mode on that is, uh, the throttling is really smooth as well. So seat height's low as well, both feet flat on the floor, feel in control of it, it's a heavy bike but I don't think it's, well it's probably lighter than my Africa Twin and I'm sort of on the balls of my feet with my Africa Twin. But yeah, they're dead smooth, there's no vibration. Like I say, the only, the only thing that's a little bit odd, it's got Pirelli Super Coursers on, isn't it? Oh no, Rossi. Filtering, filtering. So in a public place like this, you do have to be careful because people just won't know you're there. Because they are so quiet. So this is a lovely little town of Uppingham. Nice. Is there a collective noun for a bunch of zeros? <laughs> Big fat zero. Yeah. I think it's an electron zero. Electron. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, Laura. <laughs> they weigh a ton. You can feel the weight when you're riding them, can't you? You can feel the weight. Yeah, it's got a strange... I'm not sure whether it's the geometry set up or what. Do you know when you turn in, 
to bends you can it pushes against you know if you're going right you can feel it push yeah yeah it does it it does it itself doesn't it i've been trying to escape <laughs> yeah. i thought you were going to beat Please. me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that could have gone on all day <laughs> Yeah, going electric is the equivalent of modern going vegan, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but you do you do have to talk to a lot of people. It's a bit like having a, a classic car or something like that. Like I can't stop anywhere without people coming up. Yeah, yeah. Talking. That, yeah. yeah. I keep saying about it is, is the fact that the spirit of motorcycling isn't lost no. with an electric bike. And you're I, still you're still riding a bike. And I think that's. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. I, know. I, I noticed some of the comments on yeah. you. You know, when you said you were going to ride yeah. zero bikes yeah. on yeah. Twitter, some of the comments yeah. oh. that were coming up on there, and they're all from sort of older guys, probably like, you know, my sort of an age, saying, "But I, I want to change gear myself. I don't want a bike that changes mm. gear." Yeah, but, it's, but it's like, it's so. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. The amount of hate I get on Twitter is like, Yeah, I can imagine. I can and there was imagine. one guy who was like, he was like, uh, it always starts with, well, how, how, uh, what's the range? And then yeah. you explain it. Yeah. And then it's like, and, and then it's like, oh, it wouldn't work for me because I got 170 miles to work. And I said, well, you support a yeah. team and you only support that team and yeah. you can't support that team. I also think it's the way that electric is kind of right down our throats where it's like, you know, we're going to ban petrol engines by this time. So it feels like something's been taken away where it should actually yes. be, here's an alternative. Yes. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. diesel, petrol, you know, hydrogen, electric, yes. they all do the same job in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people were buying them, are buying them just because they like them because actually it isn't, it, it, it's, you know, it's it's not like you're taking a petrol engine and you're muting the sound on it because all the characteristics that you have in a petrol vehicle are, are different. You know, the revs, you know. Yeah, a petrol bike is noise, vibration, gears. They, they're all linked to each other. Um, they're actually a rolling compromise. Yeah. Fundamentally, yeah. they're awkward. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a real big mess to turn an engine, which really is best to stand alone yeah. with some kind of... But when, when you read a lot of comments from people uh, and, and you see a lot of people saying on like YouTube and that sort of thing, I'm getting a lot of vibes through the bike, I'm getting a lot of vibes through the bars or through the foot pegs. It's like, well, but you don't want an electric bike. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think mind it, what do you want? Yeah. But I always say, imagine if it was the other way around, because when the cars came out, half of them were electric, all the cabs in London were electric yeah. as well, so they went to so imagine trying to sell combustion engines now. Yeah. So you're going to dig it out of the ground, <laughs> yeah. you're going to transport it back in a ship, then really explosive, then you have to make special stations yeah. Yeah. that yeah. you have to go to, yes. you know, and then you're, you going have, you're going to have this flammable <laughs> liquid in your garage. Yeah. And, you and then you're also going to sit on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what happens if I crash? What do yeah. you burn? Yeah. 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 Remember, no revving. So we're heading back now to the Zero Camp and then what we're going to do is just take the bikes out, do whatever we want basically. So what I want to do in a little while is just flick it into sport mode just to see how well the bike goes. in actual sport mode. Oh Jesus Christ, that was a bit unstable. Lost a bit of traction there on that corner. I don't know whether the back wheel locked up, whether I was giving it a bit too much on the braking or what I was doing then. Oh no, I think it's just the side of the tyre actually. It doesn't, doesn't feel that nice on the side of the tyre. And I don't know why that is. 
whether it's just meant to feel like that, but definitely did not feel too good on the side of the tyre then. So pretty much um, clocks as you would expect to find on a, a TFT, got your range, got your battery percentage. I think if it had some connectivity as well, you know, it's, what, it's sort of what people expect nowadays, isn't it? So either GoPro connectivity, phone connectivity, that sort of thing. I know that the more you've got in the way of um, technology and all the rest of it, the more it slows you down. And to be honest, a lot of the technology, you can keep it, as far as I'm concerned. We were just talking about um, Apple CarPlay and that sort of thing while we are having lunch. And, uh, you know, I, I've disabled the Apple CarPlay on my Africa Twin because it just gets on my pit. And this is uh, refreshingly technology free when it comes to that sort of thing. You've got your basic rider modes. You've got your miles per hour. No need for a rev counter, obviously. You've got your range to empty. Oh, it's a good little bike. Uh, I do like them, I do like them. Uh, and it's, it's like I keep saying, you know, the spirit of motorcycling is not dead in these machines. It's very much alive. And, you know, in another nine years' time now, uh, in another nine years' time, you're, not, you're just not going to be able to buy a brand new petrol bike. Um, these are a very viable alternative. They're a good alternative to petrol. It's not the same. It's never going to be the same. So if you can get past that, just get on one, take it for a ride, see what you think. It's still biking, just without the noise, the fumes and the vibration, basically. It is still biking, though. I think in a few years' time, hopefully other technologies will have caught up by then. But there isn't another viable alternative to electric at the moment. The infrastructure's there with electric. You know, there, there's, um, wah, there's plenty of infrastructure there. You could do the North Coast 500 on an electric bike. If you watch uh, New Zero Land, YouTube channel New Zero Land, uh, that, those guys did, uh, well, he did it on an Energica touring around New Zealand. Most of it was pretty easy, pretty straightforward, as long as you plan your route, obviously. But there's nothing to say that you can't tour on these bikes. You can tour on these bikes. A little bit more planning. I would say as well, in Scotland, if you were doing the North Coast 500, okay, the east side of Scotland, the A9, uh, up to and past Thurso, you are going to need regular stops, I think, probably for recharge. But once you get past Tong and Betty Hill, if you were doing it in an anti-clockwise direction, once you got past uh, Tong and Betty Hill, heading towards Durness and then the west coast to come south, um, the amount of recharge and regen that you're going to get on the back lanes is going to be uh, quite a lot. I think it would surprise you the amount of re regen that you'd get on one of these bikes heading down that way. I think uh, the North Coast 500 wouldn't be that challenging for an electric bike as long as you planned it properly. I think it'd be quite easy to be honest. So we're now in sport mode. We're on the same bike but not the same bike. So we're on the bike that uh, Bob was on earlier. Wow, the turn of speed is just brilliant. I love it. <laughs> oh, I can't get the smile off my face. Now it's in sport mode. It's a completely different beast. And it is comfortable. It's like I say, my, my legs feel a bit more hutched up on this. Slightly more aggressive riding style. You're a bit, a little bit cantered forward on it, but it's not that much. Oh, this one handles far sweeter than the one that I was riding. I don't know why that is. Maybe, maybe it's just suspension setup. But this one handles slightly different. Feels a lot better. Wow, Jesus. Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> and really, I know uh, a lot of you guys out there will be saying, and girls will be saying, oh, you know, it's got no soul, it doesn't, it doesn't make any noise like a petrol motorcycle does. No, it doesn't. But really, the amount of noise that you get, you know, helmet noise, 
it's not until you actually ride one of these that you realize actually how much helmet noise you get you know ambient noise if you like across the top of your crash helmet and that sort of thing um, that is most of what you're hearing I think when you're riding a normal motorcycle unless, unless you've got really loud cans on it so when you open this thing up and you get that ambient noise you could be riding a normal petrol bike You'd, it's impossible to tell yeah it's got no gears changing gear that's so last year isn't it With these, it's less about being in the correct gear with one of these. And I know there's a lot of people out there going, oh yeah, but if I can change gear myself, then I can just knock it down a gear. You don't need to with this. It's got so much torque. But it does feel very planted. There's no skitteriness with this bike. really really enjoyable ride and I know I, I know I keep saying that and it's probably getting a little bit boring <laughs> but it is so there it is then and this is the zero SRF so this is the unfaired version it looks pretty mean doesn't it, it looks pretty mean it's not dissimilar it's not dissimilar to the Ducati Monster, in a way. It's got those sort of aggressive looks to it. It's a nice bike. So, the brakes need a bit of attention, I think. So, rear single pot caliper on there. They're not, the rear brakes aren't the best. Not on this bike. I, I seem to remember them being, you know, okay when I rode the other bike, the newer bike from Pidcox. Same with the front one. I just think they need some attention. Um, they just look a bit shot to me. There's not much left on the pads. Can't actually see. But regardless of how much is left on the pads, they just feel a little bit shot to me. The discs don't feel lipped or anything. So that show a monoshock suspension. And then that big electric motor there. Belt drive, so no chain maintenance with this. Z-Force. 7510. I don't know exactly what that means. So 14.4. So that relates to kilowatt hours for this bike. Let's turn it on and have a look at those headlights. They look okay, don't they? That's sort of... Is that the daytime light? That's full beam there. Dip. Yeah, it was full beam. Mirrors are pretty good. You can see where you've been. And then this switch gear. On this side, I mean, it's it's quite simplistic switch gear. There's not a lot to it. So you've got your headlight, beam, dip beam, etc. there. And then this mode button. I'm not going to go through the mode button because every time I go through the mode button, I end up having to turn the bloody bike off because I don't understand it and I don't have enough time normally to go through everything with you I mean it's a it's a TFT it needs a clean it's got all the information on there that you know that you need it's quite easy to read there's nothing extraneous about the information on there it's it's um, pretty straightforward well as you'd expect on any basic bike really and they are you know if I was gonna pick fault with it I would say maybe it's a little bit too basic the switch gear and what you get for your money considering these things are expensive yeah they are they are a bit basic so it would be nice to see um, connectivity, you know, 
smartphone connectivity and with that with that TFT as well being able to have your maps or at least some kind of GPS connected to it you know even if it was directional arrows and that sort of thing that appeared on your screen you know like Triumph have done um, something to make it more worth the money more worth laying out this sort of cash for a bike like this and everybody else is at it that's that is really the thing that I would find the hardest to swallow buying a bike like this that you don't get any gizmos and gadgets with it as such anyway I'm gonna get back on and ride it and then I'll talk some more Stands a bit. Oh shit! <laughs> Remember, you're not on the Africa Twin. <laughs> oh, it just nearly dropped. <laughs> what a burk. The stand just decided to spear itself into the ground. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of a heart and mouth moment. So, this is the SRF then. So this is a fared version and it does keep a lot of the wind off here so the wind's hitting me up here now because it's, it's quite a short screen so it's a really relaxed riding position on this bike and this one again feels it, it's just um well they're a joy to ride to be honest they're not they're not difficult bikes to ride remembering the last srf that i rode from Pidcocks. Yeah, the brakes are far far nicer on this one as well than on that SRS. But again, lovely ride, nice and smooth, smooth throttling. We're in sport mode and there's no there's no jerkiness, there's no snatchiness in the throttle. The ride is just really nice. The suspension is well set up on this bike. It's definitely a bike that you feel you could do a hell of a lot of miles on. I think you need a bit of a wind deflector there. So wind yeah, it hits you right across here upwards. But again very well balanced bike. Those mirrors are quite a long way away for adjustment, but once they are adjusted, they're pretty good actually. Although, less in your eye line, you know, like with handlebar mirrors up here, because you're already looking ahead, you don't have to look for them, they're just here, aren't they, right at the side of you. With these, I tend to find myself looking down, so you're not really taking your eyes off the road. I mean, the, that van is still in my peripheral vision, looking down at the mirrors. There is the app for this bike as well, so you can do all the setting up actually in the app. So your traction control, your, your torque and everything else, you can, you can sort of preset everything in your phone. Are you doing that on purpose? So again, seat height, it's not high at all. So range is an issue, of course. The price is an issue, but you have to take into consideration that, you know, once you've paid out for this bike, you've not got a lot of other things to pay for. Fuel is extremely cheap. Servicing is extremely cheap. No tax, 1,500 quid back from the government and they're great fun to ride. What I would like to see is more sort of large bikes to compete with the current crop that we've got on the road, you know, in terms of, you know, GSs, Multistradas, Africa Twins, because there's not a lot in terms of competition for those sort of bikes. And really, would people want to swap 
their adventure bikes for one of these. I don't, I don't think they would. I would. I'd have one as well as, but the pr the price of them prohibits that. So we're just heading back in now. Going to um, take the bike back, and then we'll have a bit of a natter on the way home. I think. So jumping back on this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's nice to be back on my own bike. I do find it really comfortable, this ride. But really, electric bikes, yeah, I'd be happy having one, to be honest with you. So anyway, folks, that's it for today. I am sick of talking. I will see you on the next video. I don't know what that's going to be yet. I think it will be something Triumph related. So I think it's either a Street Triple RS, which I would be very excited to ride, or it will be a bit of a cruiser. I'm not sure what that was. I'll put that on the screen, what it what um, that could be. Thanks for coming with me today for this zero press day. It's been exciting. It's been, well, a lot of experience and I met some lovely people. So I met Moto Bob and I met Lara Moto as well. So hopefully you're going to meet up with uh, Lara at some point in the not too distant future, hopefully. And we'll go for a ride out because she only lives in Derby. So that could be a Peak District ride coming up with Lara. And thank you to the guys at uh, Zero as well. So that was Mark and Paul and Dan. It's been an exceptional day out. Thank you to all you guys. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers for now. Over and out. <laughs>